Okay, welcome our current Nesbitt sixth and seventh grade families to a little information night from myself and the middle school team. I am Ryan Hansen Vera. I'm your proud principal. A little housekeeping regarding how tonight is going to run. Um, we are in webinar format, so this is being recorded. We will rec we will um, share the recording on YouTube um, with other families to review and ask questions later. We also have enabled the Q and A. So if you have questions while we're presenting or things you'd like to ask the team, please throw it in the Q&A. If we don't answer it right away, we absolutely will review it after this meeting and make sure to um, get your answers uh, shared with you. We will post like an FAQ type document. Um, and this is not the only time you'll be hearing from us regarding our um, transition to an international baccalaureate middle years program for Nesbitt Middle School. This process really includes our parents as well. So there's also a big role in this kind of adventure for all of you as well. So with that, I would like to share a little bit about our team. So this is uh, the team of Nesbitt Middle School. We are so extremely proud, um, particularly of our middle school group. They are creative and resourceful and tenacious. Um, and we're very um, excited to be on this journey with them and, and certainly um, value their leadership in this work. Um, and we are also um, a connected school. So even though your middle school student um, is on a smaller middle school kind of campus, they're connected to a big community of people that truly care about them. And so these are all of those other teachers on campus that are very supportive of our work and certainly really love your, seeing your kids every day. Um, so with that, I will let my team introduce themselves. So let's start off with sixth grade. Um, my name is Kyle Ting, uh, sixth grade reading, writing, and math. And I'm Tim McIntyre, uh, sixth grade reading, writing, and individuals and societies. Seventh I'm grade. Katie, I'm Katie Hunter. I teach seventh grade reading, writing, and social studies. Eighth grade. I uh, am, I am Shonda McEwen. I'm going to use IB language. I teach Lang and Lit and um, both periods of eighth grade math. Uh, my name is Travis Whitebird. I also teach Lang and Lit for eighth grade, as well as both sections of Individuals and Societies, which is the IB language for uh, social studies. I'm Tina Farrell. I'm the Education Specialist for middle school. Uh, I'm Cassandra D. Wood. I teach uh, all middle school science, uh, sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. And Mr. Wood is our IB coordinator, which is a new leadership role. So we thank her for her leadership in that. So to ground us in a little bit of our work here, oops, there we go. I wanna, I wanna start with a bit of data. So this is some bright spot data regarding Nesbitt School. And so <clears throat> as we were embarking on this journey, we wanted to make sure it was really connected to the story of our school and what's important from our youth truth data is that 95% of the students surveyed at Nesbitt um, respond positively to the following. Does your teacher want you to do your best? So our teachers care about our students and our students know that. And one of the beautiful things I know that you all know about Nesbitt is the relationships that they're building with their team of educators. And when we think about what is needed for um, encouraging adolescents, the developmental assets research says that connection with an adult outside of the family, a positive adult in their life is a predictor of success. 82% of our staff say that they feel like their work um, contributes to the goals of the school. And I can definitely attest that the teammates sitting in front of you tonight, their work, their dedication is definitely honored and respected as um, contributing to our school. And then what our families say, 98% of our families say that they feel comfortable approaching um, their teachers uh, about their child's progress. And we want to keep that connection strong. And that's so much what this IB program will bring to Nesbitt. I also want to mention part of our data that has come up, particularly from this year's Youth Truth Survey. We had a lot of questions about academic challenge and the rigor of our program. That is another big factor as to why we are differentiating to an international baccalaureate middle years program. 
we feel that this enhancement will bring and rise the rigor and challenge of our program because we also have on the forefront of our minds creating readiness for students to excel to and through high school. We wanna set our students off on a really great path. Our signature practices at Nesbitt um, are very strong and everything is connected to that idea of that beloved community. We really take into consideration um, the intellectual supports, the social emotional and the behavioral supports. So we really lead with our head, our heart and our hands. And I'm sure you and your families have experienced that through your experience so far with our middle school. We will continue with um, uh, reading and writing model practice of readers and writers workshop um, TK through eighth grade. We have a very inclusive culture and climate, and we continue to provide multi-tiered supports, meaning we provide support for all students, all student abilities and achievement levels. I'm gonna go back. My screen froze. There we go. <laughs> So um, we were asked a few times, why are we making the program change? So like I was saying before, we are really taking into consideration, making sure we're setting our middle schoolers off on the right path for success when it comes to high school and beyond. We want to make sure that we found a program and a framework to align with that really also stayed true to the core values and the things that make Nesbitt so special. So our school seeks to create a safe and nurturing and respectful learning environment where diversity is valued. And the aim of an international baccalaureate is to make sure that students are connecting their learning to a broader context being the world and that they see themselves as a citizen and that their learning and their education can help them to make a positive impact. So for us, aligning with an IB helps us to um, strengthen that narrative, that learning is important and that learning will take you far because we want you to make a difference. Still staying true to Nesbitt and another reason as to why the IB really aligns with um, our thinking as educators within this program is that it is student-centered. Um, our philosophy at Nesbitt follows that student-centered approach um, and that student-centered learning framework. Our middle school teachers plan and engage and monitor and adjust so that students not only achieve, but feel connected to the content and feel connected to their teacher and feel connected to each other. So we're working on those, building those developmental assets, as well as um, that growth mindset and, and students really understanding that they can make a change, they can make a difference um, and knowledge is power. That brings us to um, our wonderful announcement, and we're going to be sharing lots of details with you as to what this all means, being an international baccalaureate. We are officially a candidacy school. There are many steps in an international baccalaureate before you can become accredited, if you will. And we have met um, the, can the candidacy benchmark, which is something that takes some schools three years to achieve. And our school is lucky and fortunate enough to achieve that in five months. And that's because of the dedication of the teacher sitting before you. So every single seventh period, they meet to plan for the IB, to think about um, our current students and what they will need um, to be able to master this IB program. And we send them off to high school strong, what it will be for welcoming new students into our program. And they've been really dedicating a lot of time. So everything that we're presenting to you tonight has taken a lot of thought. Um, they have put in a lot of hard work and practice. So we're gonna talk about some of those things. So many of you are probably like, this sounds great, but what actually is an IB program? Right? So an international baccalaureate is a framework and all IB programs um, encourage students to make those practical connections between their studies and the real world. And it's preparing them for success, not only in furthering their studies, but also in their life. There's a lot of connection between who you are, what's your identity, what's your story. Um, and that really brings learning to life, particularly for a middle schooler. Um, the program um, aims to empower our students to inquire about a wide range of issues and ideas. And the result is young people who are creative, critical, and reflective thinkers. The International Baccalaureate um, has a pillar of a learner profile that has attributes um, that students are, um, following this learner profile all throughout learning units of study within the, within the IB. We want our students to be inquirers, knowledgeable, 
thinkers, communicators, principled, open-minded, caring, risk-takers, balanced, and reflective. We also know that this builds upon our core values that we already have at Nesbitt. Um, already this year, excuse me, we had our leadership students look at those IB learner profile um, attributes and sort of look at how that sort of already falls into it. So them being cognizant and really reflective of how all of those attributes fall into play in their own lives already and what they can be working on, what they're already good at, how they can do to strengthen um, both their character um, as a learner, but also just their character outside um, of academics as well. That's right. Our IB program will also have um, some new courses that um, are part of this. And, and research shows that um, participating in IB um, builds student confidence. Um, they're learning by doing, um, and they're connecting their classroom to the larger world, and that they're developing their understanding of global challenges and um, like commitment to their act as being responsible citizens. So everything that they're doing um, is connected um, and we are really pushing them to think that your learning and your education is beyond just the four walls of the classroom and that they really can contribute to solving some important problems. And we hope our new course design um, really showcases that. So the IB program is divided into eight courses of study, uh, language acquisition, language and literature, individuals and societies, math, design, arts, sciences, and physical fitness and health. So for a lot of these, we're going to be taking the curriculum and courses that we're already teaching and sort of fitting them into the IB framework. So reading and writing becomes language and literature, social studies becomes individuals and societies, math, science uh, remain. And so what IB is going to be adding to those courses and that curriculum that we already have is a strengthening of the connections across the curriculum, using a lot more common language across the different courses of study as well as, as Ms. hansen Vera was mentioning, connecting learning to a real world global picture. Um, in addition, each course of study is grounded in a set of IB objectives, which are skills and practices that students will build and develop through all three of their years in the middle years program. And we're also excited to be adding a few new elements to our program in addition to that. So an increased emphasis on design and arts throughout our existing classes, as well as for language acquisition, adding a full year Spanish class that all students will be taking. Awesome, thank you, Tim. So to speak to Spanish, Spanish will be a core class as part of the IB program, not just an elective. And this is exciting because students will have the opportunity to have Spanish for three years. During this time, they will learn about, well, they learn to read, write, listen, speak, and think critically in Spanish. They will learn about the cultures of the 21 Spanish-speaking countries. They will also make connections and comparisons to their home culture, and this will help them to understand the communities around them, as well as become global learners. And then our language and literature will we will continue doing what we're already doing, our reading and writing workshop model. IB fits with what we're doing, so it will put it into a bigger global context. There will be connections between our reading and writing classes and more opportunities for students to showcase their learning. This might look like publishing pieces and displaying them, uh, participating in a poetry slam, potentially giving class presentations, maybe entering a contest, just to name a few. Um, I do want to shout out, we have three seventh graders at Nesbitt who are being recognized tomorrow night at the Belmont Library for being poetry winners. Um, we're really fortunate to have our reading and writing class every day. That means that students read a high volume. Um, IB will also have students thinking more deeply how reading and writing connect with the world around them. So we've been really concentrating as a middle school team um, on our reading and writing units and how to have them reflect the IB model. So I will turn it over to the eighth grade team to share the work they've been doing. Yeah, Chandra and I wanted to just take a moment to be thinking about um, sort of what that looks like. What does our reading and writing program look like with IB? 
Um, a lot of what we've been talking about is how it's a little more like student facing and family facing. Those students are more engaged and active as far as what are the objectives that they're working towards in this unit. So much more clear, like this is what we're focusing on and here's the sort of checkpoints we wanna hit along the way to help ensure that all students are able to um, be a little more engaged in their learning um, and sort of be able to help, I think, ramp up that rigor um, since they know, uh, I guess, more initially and throughout the process what they're working towards. Right, and I would add on, we're also looking for students to make connections of their learning outside of the reading and writing classroom but more globally and across their other subject areas. Perfect, thank you. Next, we're thinking about individuals and societies, which as Tim mentioned earlier, sort of now refer, like is how we're referring to history. We know that it's thinking about history, it's thinking about social studies, and really looking at how individuals and societies are able to work together. Um, this will change slightly in terms of um, us being a part of an IB program um, as we think about our project-based learning and our inquiry focus, right? Allowing students to um, have a lot more choice in terms of what they are working towards, so, as well as working um, to be having them do a lot more like larger projects, more than just, oh, we're going to be learning about this, but them being a little bit digger, uh, digging deeper in depth as far as what are those projects are to help really enhance their learning and allow them to push um, themselves as well. The other big shift with IB is that we're really gonna be emphasizing building those connections across disciplines, across time, across space, uh, connecting the history content to enduring timeless uh, modern relevant concepts. Uh, so one example of that is a real emphasis on cultivating global mindedness helping students see themselves both as members of their local community and also as global citizens. Um, the IB is also gonna provide us a framework for connecting our history content to really essential transferable skills around critical thinking, uh, communicating our knowledge and understanding, um, you know, important skills that are very relevant in social studies, but are also transferable to other domains. Um, go ahead, Shadow. As they so for math, um, with the I the shift to IB, we will be looking at more project based learning. Um, there'll be a lot of problem based inquiry. We will still continue to offer our Common Core sixth, seventh, and eighth grade math classes, and then there will still be an Algebra One class offered for some of the eighth graders in that year. Um, and part of the transition we're making into IB is still using the Desmos curriculum, which we currently use. So those familiar, we tend to follow a typical uh, unit where we are doing lessons on our Chromebooks, following it up with both an assessment mid unit and then a summative one at the end. And the goal in our transition would be to substitute half, if not more of these with um, newly crafted units based on this inquiry, thinking more um, in terms of IB language, thinking about um, form relationships and logic with the units that we introduce to supplement this work. Um, new to Nesbit next year is something we are calling design. It is one of the core contents um, and students will be receiving 50 hours of design that's going to be embedded as part of their content classes and their electives. And what this really uh, focuses on is the design process, which will include uh, showcasing projects. Um, it is based on criteria basing uh, criteria based grading. And really what this uh, kind of means is that during design projects um, that students are building, they'll have an opportunity to take full responsibility for the development, review, um, refining their projects. It'll help uh, students learn about inquiry and analysis of design problems. 
but also work through the development and creation of feasible solutions. And then they'll be able to test, evaluate their models and prototypes. So some students do this uh, in my science classes, but this is now going to be um, across all subject areas. It could be in math, it could be in reading and writing um, in their electives. And so we're really proud that um, design is gonna be one of the focuses of our IB program. Another exciting piece of our IB enhancement is that, that um, music and the arts will be kind of incorporated all throughout the content areas. In particularly, we will um, have a, an elective course that, that showcases this, and we started some of this work this year. So right now, our students are engaged in, um, in the arts of music, and um, we're working on a, a choir class, and students are singing, they're working on their performance skills. Um, we had students um, in um, this elective class this year that were experimenting with writing a jingle and presenting those jingles to other classes. And the jingles were around kind of like a social issue that they wanted to bring attention to. So we've already been starting that work, but really we're focusing on the music appreciation. What is the genre? What are the different artists and composers and stories that music can tell and teach us about other people's cultures and experiences? And again, how the art connects us all. And so expect this as part of an elective, but also it can definitely be incorporated in his, uh, in individuals and societies courses, Lang and Lit courses, um, math and science. Um, for science, we are going to continue using our California Next Generation Science Standards and our district content. Um, we are going to do some more focus on inquiry-based learning and phenomenon-driven content. This is um, kind of, I wonder about what's going on, not giving them the answers right off. Um, again, like many other classes, there are many more project-based learning activities. And of course, designing uh, and showcasing their projects. Um, some of the things that we already are doing, um, we do the Solutionary STEM Fair. Um, this year, seventh graders have built uh, earthquake towers and wind turbines. Eighth graders have built bottle rockets. So those are some of those large um, project-based projects um, that we have been doing. And uh, we will continue with our digital notebooks um, as part of our IB program. There will be some enhancements made to physical fitness and health. So this was this shift was um, kind of introduced to students a little bit this year. We have PE coaches that have um, kind of taken on the PE instruction this year, which gave our teachers an embedded preparation period. Um, and, and while they are on that preparation period, they have been engaging in all of this planning work for IB so that what we roll out is strong and that we're prepared. Um, how we will shift back is that we will still be providing students with physical activities um, uh, three times per week. And then two times per week, they will be engaging in health and wellness curriculum and social emotional learning. So it's not just out there running the mile run. We're also teaching them about how to take care of themselves, um, how to take care of their wellness as they grow and develop, um, how their brains are functioning at this um time in their lives and um, how they can really take care of one another. So there is a great um, physical and health education curriculum that um, we will be designing and working through. So um, that will be a big enhancement for PE. And then I'll have Cash share a bit here too, our IB coordinator, but I, I just want to share with you the thought and um, the, the real hard work that the team has been putting in um, there are many categories of professional development benchmarks that teams have to meet in order to um, be vetted by an international baccalaureate team. So through this process, we are assigned a professional coach that works with our team. Um, we are required to take series of professional developments and meet those benchmarks. Um, it also means that we will have validation visits where um, we will have visitors throughout all of next year come and tour our campus and interview our students and interview our parents and talk with our teachers about how 
our IB program is launching. And so right now we are um, wrapping up all of our category one professional developments. And um, just before we logged on, Mr. Wood and I were talking about the category two conference that we're going to be signing up for in June. And so I, I also want to shout out some of the amazing trainings that they have done this year. So we attended the IB head of school conference teachers did a two-day training around design and how to implement design in a, in a middle years program. They took a project-based learning 101 three-day training over their summer. We engaged in social justice and civic engagement, um, problem-based learning virtual training. Um, we've done some school tours and we'll continue to do so. And um, they took a methods PD in February. And so we're really working hard, so much so that our team has also created an amazing um, hub, which is basically their directory. So what's required is that teachers have to basically unit design. We submit those unit designs to an IB coach and a board who reviews those documents to ensure that we're meeting all the required benchmarks. And I'll pause right there to see if Mr. Wood wants to, to add anything so that you can understand about the tremendous amount of work this takes professionally for our teachers. Yeah, we have been talking to the kids about um, their PE coaches. And so on the other side of that is that during that PE time, uh, our team collaborates very well together, um, each challenging uh, each grade level. And we are working, like Ryan said, on our basically our plans, um, moving forward, you know, capitalizing on what is best. Um, that we already do, but also focusing on the new skills and objectives that IB has us working on. And so we really are um, pre-planning this so that we will out get next year with all sixth, seventh and eighth grade um, uh, going forward with IB implementation. That's right. And we also would like to reiterate that an international baccalaureate middle years program is meant for all learners. We feel like this is a great program that gives our students a cutting edge. We'll be the first school in BRSSD and the first middle school in this area to offer an MYP. And what this means is that we're giving our students the, the, um, the rigor, the academic experience and the agency to be able to navigate um, high school. So and when we think about transition, Sequoia offers a diploma program uh, international Baccalaureate Diploma Program, which means if students fall in love with this way of learning and they'd like to continue that work, they surely can, can follow their pathway to Sequoia High School, and we will be building that pipeline with them. But it also means that they would flow into the Pathways Program at Carlmont. Carlmont has wonder, uh, wonderful um, pathways for students if they're interested in biochem, they can go ahead and take that pathway. If they're interested in journalism, they can go ahead and take that pathway. And because we are incorporating so many different modes of learning, students will really be prepared to navigate those um, rigorous programs in high school. So we're really excited about that. Um, this is a little glimpse behind the scenes. So we are offered professional coaching, um, they coined us kind of the magical unicorn team in this work, and that's just really a credit to the wonderful teachers that we have um, pouring their hearts into designing this um, MYP for your students. And they've already been taking on a bit of this work and experimenting with some things right now, and they do that by making work public. So something that you should expect as a parent of a student in an MYP is that your child will be showcasing their work often. And that will mean we want you to come and be audience members. Um, we want you to come and see their work and hear their presentations. We want students really making those connections. Um, we want them when they're writing their essays to know that the purpose of writing essays is to get your message across to someone else. And we want their work to be powerful. And so um, that's a big part of what we're working on. We really wanna connect content to society and that everything that they're learning right now has a bigger purpose for who they aim to be. We have really um, pictured there is um, Travis really facilitating a really strong conversation with eighth graders. Um, their unit, uh, their mini lesson was um, regarding um, uh, reading um, mini lesson on microaggressions and code switching and how that can come up and that um, readers then use their identities to reflect on how characters go through things in books, but then also how us as readers go through things and how we can work on those um, together. And we had another big example that just came up uh, last week. And so I want to have the team share a little bit about Nesbitt's Poetry Slam. 
Yeah, just last Friday uh, in the afternoon, we had all six, six, seventh, and eighth graders all get together for our first uh, annual poetry slam. Um, we had 27 poems read, um, a wide variety of poems that were either read just by one person, more on the serious side, some a little bit more um, descriptive. Um, you had plenty of groups that were read um, in pairs or even in groups, right? It helps go ahead and just share and highlight all the work they'd done inside their poetry unit. Um, it took a lot of courage to get up there, uh, being able to present, but also to be able to be vulnerable, right? Showing, um, you know, showing your poetry to other people. Um, this is the kind of work that we're really uh, looking to have our students get better um, at doing, feeling more comfortable being able to share their work, um, especially in front of an audience, right? Being able to really um, highlight and be proud of that work they're doing, while also allowing others to be able to appreciate it and learn from it as well. Awesome. And so that is what we've been working on for our launch. We have a few more details to share with you, but we really wanted to congratulate the team. Thank all of you for trusting us and especially shout out Ms. DeWitt for her new role as our IB coordinator. So we want to move on to some details that you're probably wondering about, um, and that's electives and schedules. So we want to review a little bit about our elective program. So with an IB, um, we will be designing um, elective opportunity. Right now we have an elective wheel where our students are engaged in enriching electives. This is currently what we're offering. We currently offer leadership, advisory, STEM investigations, technologic, fine arts, social media, literacy, music appreciation, and Spanish. Now, Spanish will no longer be an elective. Spanish is a course. And so the purpose of that is um, to kind of take that off the elective wheel. We want students um, engaging in foreign language as a full course, part of their courses of study. Um, so that will, that will start off basically introductory for all students next year um, because our uh, seventh, seventh and eighth graders will be joining our program um, and they haven't had the beauty of having Spanish as a full-time course. So this will really be an introductory course, but then moving forward, what this will mean is that we will have kind of a cultural appreciation and introduction to Spanish in sixth grade. We will have um, kind of some practical application in seventh grade and then conversational Spanish um, in eighth grade where we're ready to go ahead and, and take ninth grade Spanish. So we really want them having three strong years of that kind of um, practice. But for, for electives, um, we will um, be leaning onto our teachers to designing some really amazing offerings, but expect fine arts and music and design, um, some technology pieces. Of course, we're wanting to engage their leadership. Um, the advisory course to us has always been really important in making sure particularly sixth graders know how to navigate middle school, um, but, but we really will be offering a, a broad range of experiences for your kids. And then when it comes to schedule, there absolutely will be some enhancements and changes to kind of how the day is broken down and maybe how classes will flow. But the overall structure will remain like a seven period day. Um, we may um, have some adjustments to the schedule that we need to um, share with you um, as we continue to uh, finalize our design for next school year. But you can expect that students will have a reading and writing block. Mm -hmm. Um, that students will have their math, science, and social studies. Let me use our IB language. We'll have their math, science, um, and um, individuals and societies courses, and then um, PE and electives. Um, so um, we will share adjustments to this. We're working on this right now, but this is currently what we have, and it, it won't feel much different for all of you. And then, of course, support services. I know with a change, Nesbitt is a very inclusive site. Um, we took that into consideration in our design. We want to make sure that we are offering um, a program where everyone um, will kind of benefit. And so we've done a lot of work with Ms. Farrell as well. And so um, I'll let Tina kind of share our support services in this program. Hello. Uh, so support services will look, look pretty much the same. It'll be pushing the classroom. And awesome projects and, and uh, global-minded activities. There will, the only change will be pull out won't be that one period a day. It'll be pulled out different periods throughout the day to go along with the schedule. The great thing about the IB program is that it really is going to help all students go to another level by being able to see the real life applications of what they're learning, um, being able to present how they learn in different ways instead of feeling like they're in a box 
being able to see how what they're doing in school touches the community by you guys coming to see what they're doing and showing their obstinance to, to in, in all levels. So we're really excited about it. All students are going to feel like they, they already feel like they belong in Nesbitt, but they're really going to feel like they belong because we're going to make sure that they are displayed and that they are able to not only take what they're learning here and, and build it to another level, but take it when they go off to high school, like Ms. Hesavera said, and feel like they are ready to move on. So it's going to be a really great for all of our students. Awesome. And one other thing that we wanted to talk about um, is thinking about athletics and clubs. Um, these sorts of things, these extracurriculars are still going to exist and continue to flourish here at Nesbitt. Um, we want to make sure that a little bit like the reputation of rigor, right? Um, think about that academically, that also applying here to Nesbitt, right? Nesbitt has just as competitive sports teams um, as other schools in the surrounding district. We are part of the ADAL Athletic League, so playing with other uh, Peninsula teams, um, having volleyball for both boys and girls. We have flag football, which is co-ed. Uh, we had our first cross country team this year. Um, we had boys and girls basketball teams. We had five from basketball teams this year. Uh, we've also done a lot as far as being able to combine sports with terms of sandpiper to give us a more competitive edge and allow um, for us to have more people be able to get out there and to be able to play. Um, we're also really excited to continue to offer a lot of the same clubs that we've been having. Um, we have Mr. Ting's board game club on Friday after uh, afternoons. We have robotics. We have homework club. Um, lots of other clubs are working to be able to develop to help students um, continue to expand on what they're most interested in. Um, so you really want to be encouraging our students, especially within this IB program, to know what they like, what they're interested in, to continue to, to really search and strive towards more um, and, and what they really care about. I'll just add in there too, we're also offering in our middle school, we offer uh, a spring musical every year. Um, this year's musical is Lion King. So if performing arts and singing is your students forte in life, they have the opportunity to participate in that also at Nesbitt. Awesome. Great point, Ms. McEwen. Um, I saw them rehearsing today and we have lots of middle schoolers out there on that stage. Um, I would like to say that um, even though we are a small school, we want to make sure that we're providing our students a really cutting edge middle school experience. Middle school is a really important time. Prior to me joining Nesbitt, I was a comprehensive middle school principal at a school much like Ralston. So I understand that, um, that importance of making sure that they are prepared for high school and making sure that they feel ready, but also there is a beauty in a small site. Every single teacher here knows every single kid's name at Nesbitt. You can't beat that. Every student is connected with other students. They know each other, they feel safe. Um, and I also think with this layer of adding IB, they're also going to feel like really empowered by their learning. And that's exactly what we need for our students to be successful. So we're very excited for this program. I want to close up by each team member sharing something special that they um, feel about Nesbitt and why they're excited to go move towards IB. I'll give them a second because I'm putting them on the spot, but I think it's important because I want you all to know how um, excited we are to bring this kind of change and revived energy to the middle school. So teachers, share out what you love about Nesbitt and what's been the best part of learning about this IB program so far. What do you think it's going to bring? Me first. No <laughs> Tina. Um, I love that we are an inclusive school and I am excited because uh, our students, their brain, they have so many creative thoughts and to see how it's going to be displayed when they are able to like design their own things and come up with all these creative things. I'm so excited. So excited. Me too. Yeah. Um, I'll go next. So if you don't know, I'm also a, a Puma parent. I have a sixth grader in the middle school program and I love our middle school for that sense of community that we build and just the sense of togetherness that we have. I'm super excited about the IB program because it really is meant for every single learner. And it's going to give all of our students, all of your kids, all of our kids, that opportunity to showcase what they know in the way that works best for them. To jump on that, I think that's the aspect I'm most excited about. Um, the shift to the IB program is, is the opportunities for students to showcase their work I know many of you were able to come to our museum night earlier in the year and then also 
science night and seeing the students at the poetry slam last Friday. It's just, it's so cool to see them get so excited about uh, bringing their work to a bigger stage and a bigger audience. Um, and I'm really excited about getting more opportunities to do that. Um, just kind of tagging on to that. One of my favorite things about Nesbitt is the community. Um, this is my 10th year here. And if ever I were to change sites, I would leave the district entirely that I'm, I'm here or somewhere else entirely. Um, but one of the things that I have been enjoying quite a bit um, has been as we're doing all this unit planning, thinking about things that we're going to change or introduce next year, we've been trying some things out in the classroom, whether they are smaller um, things, just one day discussions or bigger things like the poetry slam and just seeing students not only engage in it, but just being open to it. And then us seeing not only it in the classroom, but expanding beyond it, just the success of that kind of engagement um, has us all, all kind of um, excited about things, not only that we're planning right now, but getting to introduce it next year. I'll go next. Um, one of the things I love about Nesbitt and particularly our middle school is this um, amazing teacher team. So, um, you know, we, some of us are new and some of us have been around since the inception of middle school at Nesbitt. And we really do spend a lot of time collaborating, holding, holding, working together, but um, holding uh, our students to some of the highest expectations. And uh, there are no gaps in that with what we do. Um, one of the things I love about ID is that it's, you know, we've always talked about um, teaching the whole child. And first that was academics, and then it's the social and the emotional. And really what IB brings to that is some world skills, something that they can take beyond their teenage years um, and really build skills um, and learning profiles that, that benefit, benefit them forever, really. I'll go, okay. What makes Nesbitt Nesbitt is our sense of community, our team, all of us working together, your students and you supporting us. Um, it's just a really beautiful thing and I'm really looking forward to providing students with more opportunities to showcase their learning and bring all of us together. Uh, one thing that I really like, love about Nesbitt is really the, the community, the diversity within that community. Um, whether that meaning, of course, working with each other as, as staff, <clears throat> but also working with our students and also with our families. Um, I said I would answer Candace's question live, um, and that's really just recognizing um, that, like, yes, it is that passion that everybody seems to have um, as far as supporting um, all students to be able to be successful. Um, one thing I'm really looking forward to, I think, um, is allowing um, for some different ways of student thinking. Um, as far as them being able to think differently going across different, you know, curriculum, um, different subjects, um, as well as being able to maybe dive a little bit deeper into content um, than they've done before. Um, and really sort of having them responsible for that own learning. I think those are all things that I'm super excited about for IB, um, which I've already started to do a little bit in general at Nesbitt Middle School, um, and even a little bit more this year, and just looking forward um, even more towards the future um, to allow them to, um, you know, to take it to that next level. Thank you. And with that, we are super excited for our journey um, to launch officially our International Baccalaureate Middle Years Program at Nesbitt for the 23-24 school year. Um, we can't wait to share more with you. This is just an introduction. We're going to be meeting with your children next Monday. Um, the current sixth and seventh graders will get to get a break from PE and come into an assembly with all of us. And we're going to share with them um, what we've all been planning how they're gonna be engaged in this work and helping us design the best middle school possible. So thank you for trusting us. We're very excited about this work and this is just the start because you're on this journey with us too. And a big part of the IB is that parent connection. So we're looking forward to you uh, staying connected with us. Okay, please drop any questions, any thoughts, any um, things you're pondering into the Q&A. We will uh, stay on for a few minutes and answer some of those. And then um, we will capture the Q&A also and, and send out some follow-up information. But thank you for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. Um, like I said, this was recorded for you to review at another time as well or to share with a friend who might not be here. 
Um, and as always, take care. Thank you for being here. Go Pumas.